Section 7 of Crime, Its Causes and Remedies by Cesar Lombroso. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information on a volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 7. Alcoholism. Subchapter 36. Alcoholism and Food Supply. As we have seen in the preceding chapter, the effect of food supply cannot be separated from that of alcohol. Indeed, this latter is so powerful a factor in criminal etiology that absorbs the other almost completely. Subchapter 37. Pernicious Effect of Alcohol. It is a well-known fact that alcohol, so far from rendering extreme temperatures more tolerable, increases the danger from great heat and cold alike. So that in the polar regions, and in India, soldiers and sailors, thinking to acquire greater resistance to fatigue by the use of alcoholic beverages, simply aggravate their condition. It is doubtless for this reason that in the Russian campaign, the northerners suffered more than the more temperate latents. It has been proved in cholera epidemics and that drunkards and even simple drinkers are afflicted in greater numbers than abstemious persons. Abortions are also more frequent among women who drink, and for this reason families of drinkers show a fecundity from two to four times less than that of temperate and sober couples. This fatal liquor can, then, stimulate carnal passion to the point of violence and crime without thereby increasing the birth rate. Alcohol is one of the principal causes of the rejection of recruits in the Swedish army for weakness or lack of development. These rejections rose from 32% in 1867 and fell to 28% in 1868 after the promulgation of the liquor laws. In the French departments where, on account of the scarcity of wine, there is more use of spirits, as in Finisterre, the exemption of conscripts from 72 rises to 155. Lunier. Alcohol influences the stature. The tall Wojaks, after having used brandy excess, diminished in stature until they fell below the middle height. And we have seen that the beautiful women of the Valley of Vieux lose their beauty and stature after having taken to the use of brandy. There is no cause for surprise, then, at the diminution of the average duration of life caused by the use of alcoholic drinks. Brandy should be called not eau de vie, but eau de la mort. Nissen's calculations show that the mortality among drinkers is at least 3.25 times greater than that of abstainers. Subchapter 38. Pauperism. All this repairs us to understand that one of the most evident and serious effects of alcoholism is pauperism. The progeny of the alcoholic are blind, paralytic, impotent. Even if they begin life with wealth, they must necessarily become poor. If they are poor, they are incapable of working. It is true that with the increase in wages, the number of drunkards grows disproportionately, and in consequence the number of misdemeanors also. When the wages of the miners in Lancashire increased from 4 shillings to 7 to 9, mortality caused by drunkenness rose from 495 to 1,304 and 2,605, and crimes from 1,335 to 3,878 and 4,402. But it is still worse when wages go down. Then alcohol is drunk to supply the place of clothing or food. That cold and hunger may be more easily borne, and alcohol in its turn makes the drinker constantly weaker and poorer, and keeps him always closely imprisoned in its fatal domain. It may be said, then, that alcoholism is a product both of superfluity and of poverty. This was seen in aix le chapelle where between 1850 and 1860, waiters increased a fourth, and alcoholism increased also, but it increased still more when after the crisis in America, 80 factories closed and waiters were cut down a third. The number of poor families rose from 1,865 to 2,255, and the wine shops from 183 to 305. The prostitutes increased from 37 to 101, while the marriages decreased from 785 to 630. At the same time, causes of theft and arson were multiplied. In the famine of 1860-61, to 61, it was noted in London that not one of the 7,900 members of the Temperance Society had applied for aid. Hirsch has observed that of each 100 pounds received in arms, 30 pounds are spent for drink. And Bertrand and Lee have remarked that the most miserable municipalities are those where the use of alcohol has increased inordinately and the wine shops are multiplied. A striking proof of the deleterious effect of alcohol is given by Upper Silesia, 
the misery was there so great that persons were dying of hunger and at the same time outlaws and raids so frightfully that bridal couples reeled before the altar and parents came intoxicated to the baptism of their newborn children a preacher of silesia wrote where in tebra's reigns misery and crime follow the body like its shadow it has already been noted that drunkenness is one of the chief causes of separation and divorce in germany and furthermore it is known that the children of divorced parents and second marriages furnish a strong contingent to crime and prostitution subchapter thirty nine alcoholism and crime statistics from all this it is easy to see the connection between alcoholism and crime from a social as well as a pathological point of view the first proof of this is to be found in the statistics which show a continual increase in crimes in civilized countries this increase can be justified by the growth of the population only to the extent of from thirteen per cent to fifteen per cent but it is also too easily explained by the abuse of alcoholic drinks and consumption of which increases at just the rate at which the crime increases a further clear proof is to be found in very study of criminality in france which brings to relief the parallelism of crime with the consumption of wine and spirits at least in the years of exceptionally good vintages eighteen fifty fifty eight sixty five sixty nine seventy five and the exceptionally poor ones eighteen fifty one fifty three fifty four sixty six sixty seven seventy three eighteen seventy the year of the war is an exception as in that year military statistics crowd out judicial ones in eighteen seventy six forms another exception and one which i cannot explain not having the statistics of the successive years before me while in eighteen sixty to sixty one the village seems to have postponed its effect upon crime by one year the parallelism is a strange and more noteworthy because several authors pretend to attribute a fatal influence to spirits only and not to wine so that as we shall see is proposed to encourage the distribution of wine in the countries most inclined to crime now from these statistics the relation of the consumption of alcohol to homicides and assaults is not so evident as that of wine except in the years eighteen fifty five to eighteen sixty eight and eighteen seventy three to eighteen seventy six and this is easy to understand for brawls are more easily started in the wine shops than in the establishments of the brandy sellers where the stay is too short for an opportunity to be given for quarrels another proof of the relationship of drink and crime is to be found in the absurd fact that the days of month when crimes are most frequent are just those when alcoholic drinks are most abused so schoenter reports that in germany out of two thousand one hundred seventy eight crimes fifty eight percent took place saturday night three percent sunday and one percent monday and upon these same days sexual crimes rebellion and arson took the lead with a ratio of eighty two percent in italy in eighteen seventy the only year which a record of this kind was kept the same fact was noted Ferry discovered the surprising fact that in France, in the period from 1827 to 1869, while the crimes against persons in general fell off rapidly from August to December, the serious bodily assaults, on the contrary, showed a marked increase in November when the new wine comes in. It is to be noted that it is a question of the infliction of grave injuries such as come before the assizes, and not for the mere wine shop brawls such as are tried before the minor courts. Dixon has found a single place in America that has been exempt from crime for some years, notwithstanding its large population of working men. This is St. John's Burby, Vermont. But here there is absolute prohibition of the sale of fermented beverages, beer, wine, etc., which are furnished, like poisons, by the druggists upon the written demand of the customer, with the consent of the mayor, who writes the name of the person concerned in a public register. In Belgium, it is to be estimated, alcoholism causes 25% to 27% of the crime. In New York, of 49,423 persons arranged, 30,509 were habitual drunkards. In 1890, in the whole United States, out of every 100 prisoners, 20 were drunkards, 60 were moderate drinkers, and 20 were abstainers. A table is displayed on the previous page. Crimes were committed on holidays. There would be only one holiday on the average to five working days. Data is displayed with the list of offences in as is and ordinary tribunals. Accordingly, all the crimes of violence and against persons take the lead on holidays as compared with fraudulent and premeditated crimes. In Holland, 
Four-fifths of the crimes are attributed to the abuse of alcohol. Seven-eighths of the brawls, three-fourths of the attacks upon persons, and one-fourth of the attacks upon property. Three-fourths of the crimes in Sweden are attributed to alcoholism. This applies especially to assassination and the crimes of blood, but thefts and frauds are largely due to an alcohol hereditary. In England, 10,000 out of 29,752 convicted by the SEs, and 50,000 out of 90,903 convicted by the magistrates have been drawn to crime by frequently public houses. In France, Gulamin estimates the criminals resulting from the abuse of alcohol at 50% and Bear places those in Germany at 41%. The greatest proportion of drunkards is to be found in those departments where, on account of the small production of wine, a larger quantity of spirituous liquor is consumed. Of the criminals observed by Marrow, 73% abused alcoholic drinks, and of these only 10% were normal. In my Centuria di Criminali, Rossi found that drunkenness ran up as high as 81%, of which 23% was begun in infancy. There was a difference of only 10% in the frequency of alcohols among youths and among adults. Of 100 criminals below 20 years, 64% were already addicted to drink from which we may see that this vice is very precocious. Subchapter 40. Physiological Effects All substances which have the power of exciting the brain in a normal manner drive one more easily to crime and suicide, as well as to insanity, with which last the other two are often inextricably confused. This tendency has been observed among the Medjidubs and the Aesonas, who, not having any narcotics, bring on intoxication by a prolonged osculatory movement of the head, and are dangerous people, says Bergruger, fierce and inclined to theft. Opium smokers also are often seized with homicidal fury, and out of the action of hashish, Maru felt himself impelled to steal. The effects of wine are still more pernicious, and worse still spirits, which may be called wine with its harmful principle concentrated. But most harmful of all are such liquors as absinthe and verma, which, in addition to alcohol, contain drugs that poison the nervous centres. Newman in 1876 showed how alcohol alters the haemoglobin, diminishes by one-fourth the capacity of the blood corpuscles to take up oxygen, and produces congestion in the membrane of the cortex in the brain. From this there results dilation of the blood vessels, paralysis of the muscular fibres of the walls of the vessels, oedema, and finally fatty degeneration of the irritated nerve cells. Krabelin showed that from 30 to 45 grams of absolute ethyl alcohol more or less checked and paralyzed all the mental functions. This stupor, which resembled physical fatigue in its effect, increased with a dose of alcohol absorbed, lasting for small quantities 40 or 50 minutes, and for larger quantities 1 or 2 hours. In the smaller doses, the paralysis of the mental functions is preceded by a period of activity or acceleration which lasts 20 to 30 minutes at most. But this observer has further demonstrated that the effect of alcohol is not the same for all psychological functions, that while one may have a transitory acceleration of motor innovation, the intellectual functions such as appreciation, conception, association are checked and almost arrested even by the smallest doses of alcohol. The same may be said with regard to sensation. It follows that the initial period of excitation produced by small quantities of alcohol is only a kind of fireworks due to several factors coming together, especially to the increase of external associations of ideas, associations of words, sensations, etc., to the detriment of internal associations, those more logical and profound. Under the influence of alcohol, the overexcited motor centers give the drunkard an illusory power, impelling him to the most brutal acts. The association of ideas is disturbed, and the drinker repeats without cessation the same barren platitudes, the same coarse jests. This likewise is to be explained by the initial acceleration of the psychomotor activities by which painful mental inhibitions are intercepted. Alcohol, after it has once driven its unhappy victim into this evil path, holds him fast there, since, after a drunkard is once made, the noblest sentiments become paralyzed and the soundest brain diseased. This is a new experimental proof of the truth of the statement that crime is the effect of a morbid condition of the organism. Thus, with alcoholics, the sclerosis which affects the brain, spinal cord and ganglia, as well as the liver and kidneys, shows its effects in one set of cases, in dementia, uremia, 
or jaundice, according to the part affected, and in others by crime. But unhappily crime is a commonest and most frequent consequence, a truth of which there is superabundant evidence. I met recently in prison a very remarkable thief, who was a or do, boasted of being a thief, and did not know how to talk in anything but thieves slang, and yet neither his education nor the shape of his head gave any indication of what impelled him to crime. I soon learned the cause, however, when he told me that both his father and he were drunkards. You see, he said, since I was a boy I had a passion for brandy, and now I drink from forty to eighty small glasses of it, and the brandy drunkenness passes away after I have drunk two or three bottles of wine. Habitual drinkers are not only immoral, and beget children who are defective, delinquent, or precocious debauchees, as we shall show by their history of the Duke family, but intoxication itself is a direct cause of crime. Gaul tells of a brigand named Betri, who felt himself impelled to homicide when he drank, and he mentions a woman in the Berlin who, when intoxicated, was seated with sanctuary desires. Alcohol, then, is the cause of crime, first because many commit crimes in order to obtain drink, further because men sometimes seek in drink the courage necessary to commit crime, or an excuse for their misdeeds, again because it is by the aid of drink that young men are drawn into crime, and because the drink shop is a place for the meeting of accomplices, where they not only plan their crimes but also squander their gains. It has been estimated that in London, in 1880, there were 4,938 public houses, which were the results of criminals and prostitutes exclusively. Finally, alcohol has a direct relation to crime, or rather to the prison, since after his first imprisonment, the liberated criminal, having lost his reputation and all connection with his family, seeks compensation and oblivion in drink. This is why we often find alcoholism among recidivists, and it also explains the fact observed by Mayhew that in the afternoon nearly all the thieves of London are intoxicated and generally die of drink between the ages of 30 and 40. The same thing is found among the transported convicts of Numia, who drink not only from settled habit, but also to forget dishonour, separation of family and country, and the cruelties of the wardens and their companions, and perhaps also to drown remorse. Wine becomes among them a regular medium of exchange. A shirt is worth one litre, a coat or pair of trousers too. There is nothing, even to the kiss of a woman, they may not be bought with wine. Subject 41. Specific Criminality It will be useful here to observe what criminals are especially influenced by alcohol. From Bayer's statistics of the penitentiaries and jails of Germany, shown on the opposite page, it appears that alcoholism occurred oftenest in the case of those charged with assaults, sexual offences and insurrections. Next came assassination and homicide, and the last rank those imprisoned for arson and theft, that is to say, crimes against property. These, however, are more numerous than the others with habitual drunkards. The minimum occurs in the case of forgery and swindling, and the reason, as several swindlers have said to me, it takes a clear head to carry out a shrewd scheme. According to Marambat, of 3,000 convicted persons investigated by him, 78% were drunkards, vagrants, and mendicants lead with a figure of 79%, murderers and incendiaries showed 50% and 57% respectively, and thieves, swindlers, 71%. In general, 88% of the crimes against persons were committed by alcoholics, and 70% of the crimes against property. Mara also found that among drunkards, highway robberies held the first place, 82% percent been addicted to drink. Of brawlers, 77% were the same. Of thieves, 78%, then swindlers with 66%, Murderers is 62%, and ravishers is 61%. A table is displayed on the page, listing in penitentiaries, alcoholic criminals, in general, occasional, and habitual, and the total of assaults, robbery, murder, simple homicide, sexual crimes, theft, attempted homicide, arson, premeditated homicide, and perjury. And the second part, in the common jails, with sexual offences, resistance to officers, assaults, arson, theft, fraud, forgery, etc., Vitolt found that of 40 alcoholic criminals, 15 were homicides, 8 thieves, 5 swindlers, 6 sexual criminals, 4 brawlers, 2 vagrants. We may say in general that the serious offences, especially the infliction of bodily injuries and crimes against property, simple theft and robbery, are those in which the influence of alcoholism makes itself more decidedly felt, but this action is less evident 
in the latter class of cases than in the former in studying the influence of alcohol upon the criminality of great britain and ireland there are to be found according to fornassari divers some strange differences one with the increased consumption of alcohol crimes against property without violence frequently decrease though irregularly and with the falling off of the use of alcohol crimes increase there are however some exceptions thus in eighteen seventy five to seventy six they increased with the increased consumption but in eighteen seventy seven to seventy eight increased also notwithstanding a diminution in the use of alcohol two upon violent crimes against property the consumption of alcohol is no certain influence three fraudulent crimes against property mostly decrease with a greater consumption of alcohol from eighteen seventy to eighteen seventy five and from eighteen sixty three to eighteen sixty five as the consumption rose these crimes descended from two hundred seventy six to two hundred sixty and from five hundred nineteen to two hundred thirty eight from eighteen forty eight to eighteen fifty five however the two increase together consequently independent of the consumption of alcohol there is now an increase in a diminution of these crimes thus while the use of alcohol went on diminishing from eighteen seventy five to eighteen eighty four four then thefts sometimes increased sometimes decreased four forgery and counterfeiting also decreased up to eighteen eighty four with a lowering of a price of wine but after that increased notwithstanding the lower price five crimes against persons seem to follow the fluctuations of the consumption of alcohol beverages increasing gradually with the rise in the price of alcohol as in the period eighteen forty eight to eighteen fifty seven they do not however decrease with the lowering of the price in the period eighteen seventy three to eighteen eighty nine six the other crimes have no very clear relation with the consumption of alcohol but misdemeanors and violations of police regulations decrease with the diminution in consumption finally it may be remarked that though a very important factor in england where it makes itself felt with most intensity alcoholism enters as its cause into no more than seventy seven per cent of the cases in new south wales there is no correspondence to be found between alcoholics and crime except in the case of theft and arson subchapter forty two antagonism between alcoholism and crime in civilized countries it is a remarkable fact that in civilized countries where alcohol is most abused as in new south wales and england its influence becomes weaker and weaker and bosco shows that in the united states only twenty per cent of the homicides are addicted to drunkenness while seventy per cent of the contrary are sober opposite this fact has already been explained by Collegiani and zerboglio it is not according to them that alcohol is any less terrible effect upon individuals but that the abuse of it occurs where civilization is already very far advanced and protects the individual from great crimes by increasing inhibitory power and a greater psychic activity this is why england belgium norway and germany which are the countries where the maximum quantity of alcohol is consumed but civilization most advanced furnish a smaller contingent of homicides than spain and italy where less is consumed here is a recent table of alcoholism in europe the table is displayed on the page listing austria spain germany italy united kingdom Belgium, and france with consumption of pure alcohol per capita in gallons and home size to one hundred thousand inhabitants this explains as collegiani very truly remarks why in france the serious crimes caused by alcoholism which were from seven per cent to eleven per cent in the period from eighteen twenty six to eighteen forty descend to five per cent and three per cent in the period from eighteen sixty one to eighteen eighty alcoholism continues and even increases but at the same time the inhibitory power given by civilization also increases it is for this reason that crimes diminish notwithstanding the influence of alcohol we must add that in the north the effect of the cold plays a large part and although on the one hand it induces men to drink on the other hand it lessens their impulsiveness and hence their tendency to homicide subject of forty three political disturbances alcohol is a powerful factor in insurrections this fact does not escape the attention of leaders of rebellions who have often taken advantage of it to attain their ends thus in argentina don juan manuel himself an alcoholic found a powerful aid to his political schemes in the explosions of popular rage produced by drink for the same reason alcohol was a political weapon in the hands of Quiroga, franco artigas and the wild followers of whom several like blaquito and Ogadu, 
became themselves the victims of delirium tremens. Ramos Maja. The abuse of spirituous liquors in Buenos Aires in 1834 is unbelievable. In that year, there was concerns, besides hundreds of hogsheads of brandy, 3,836 frasqueras, 263 hogsheads, and 2,182 demijohns of gin, 2,246 hogsheads of wine, 346 barrels of beer, as well as cognac and port. During the French Revolution, it was alcohol that inflamed the bloody instincts of the crowd and the representatives of the revolutionary government. Among the latter, we may recall Monastier, who, being intoxicated, had La Salle guillotined, and the next day did not remember the order he had given. The envoys from Bundy in three months emptied 1,974 bottles of wine, tamed, and including their numbered Vacheron, who violated and then shot down women who resisted his alcohol inflamed desires. It has been asserted that during the coup d'etat of the 2nd of December, enormous quantities of wine were distributed to the troops. Certainly, alcoholism was no stranger to the disturbances of 1846, among the chiefs of which, according to Chenu, there were two drunkards, Cossadier and Grand Mesnil. It is also certain that alcoholism played a great part in the commune, thanks to the great quantity of wine and spirits to be found in the besieged city. Despite notes in this connection that Dissomnia recruited the greatest number of the soldiers in the commune, who were withdrawn by the hope of gratifying their unfortunate appetite by pay and pillage, and whom alcoholism made indifferent to danger and wounds. The communist general, Cluseret, himself in his memoirs, does not attempt to conceal the fact. Never, he says, have the wine sellers made so much money as at that period. He himself often had to have heads of battalions arrested for intoxication, not only between night and morning, but also between morning and night. When things began to look black for the besieged insurgents, when the Versailles troops were threatening Fort D.C. at close range, what did the defenders do? The taverns and wine shops of the village were crowded with customers, stupefied by drink. And as near as on the very eve of the capitulation, the National Guard followed its laudable custom, smoked, slept, ate and drank. Subchapter 44. Alcoholism and Evolution In the Man of Genius, I have shown that a number of men of genius, and certain of their parents, were alcoholics. Beethoven, Byron, Avicenna, Alexander, Murger. But one may say that this is rather an effect and complication of genius than a cause, for these great and powerful brains need ever some new stimulant. Parallel to this is the fact that the more civilized peoples mostly fall prey to alcoholism, as a necessary consequence of their greater cortical excitability. Subject of 44. Tobacco. According to Venturi, criminals show a greater number of uses of snuff, not only the normal persons, but also than the insane. Criminals, 45.8% insane, 25.88% normal persons, 14.32%. And among the criminals themselves, those guilty of crimes of blood show a higher percentage, 48%, than of thieves and forgers. 43%. Criminals and lunatics form this habit very early, which is not the case with the normal man. But while the habit grows upon the insane in the asylums, with criminals it is not similarly increased by detention in prison. The prostitutes of Arona and Capua nearly all take snuff, and those who do not smoke. Marambat asserts that the passion of a minor for tobacco leads to idleness, drunkenness, and finally crime. Of 603 delinquent children from 8 to 15 years of age, 51% had the habit of using tobacco before their detention. Of 103 young men between 16 and 20, the proportion of tobacco use was 84%. Of 850 mature men, 78% had contracted this habit before the age of 20. Of these, 516 or 57% had been imprisoned for the first time before the age of 20, while those who had never made use of tobacco the proportion of those imprisoned so young was only 17%. Of vagrants, beggars, thieves, swindlers, etc., 89% of tobacco users. Among convicts who were drunkards, 74% used tobacco. Among the others, only 43%. The number of recidivists among those who smoke is 79%, and only 55% among those who do not. Tempered prisoners show 18% of recidivists among those who do not smoke, and 82% among those who do. It is clearly to be seen, then, that there is a casual connection between tobacco and crime, 
like that which exists in the case of alcohol. But, as in the case of alcohol, is a curious fact that the countries where the consumption of tobacco is greatest have a lower criminality. This contradiction is frequently met in our researches, but it soon disappears because the abuse of these stimulating substances, as in the case of alcohol, takes place especially among civilized people who learn to control themselves. Subchapter 46. Hashish. Stanley found in Africa a kind of brigands called the Ruga Ruga, who were the only natives who used hashish to excess. According to a tradition of Uganda, crime appeared among the sons of Kinto after they had taken up beer drinking. Subchapter 47. Morphine. To the foregoing intoxicants, many more may be added. The Malay, running a is impelled to his homosexual mania by the intoxication of opium. The Chinese opium eater is at once apathetic, impulsive, and inclined to suicide and murder. Many female swindlers have both the morphine habit and a tendency to hysteria, and those addicted to the use of morphine generally have a moral sense largely obliterated, and are in consequence the more inclined towards swindling and silence towards homicide and sexual offences. The slave to morphine loses little by little the power of resisting impulsive tendencies, to such an extent that it equals or surpasses the smoke of hashish, with whom criminal tendencies are common. A Chinaman, in order to get money for opium smoking, staked even his own fingers, which he cut off joint by joint as he lost. Dr. Lamson, a morphine user, poisoned his brother-in-law with morphine without comprehending the gravity of the act. When slaves to morphine are undergoing a forced abstinence, they show rage, melancholy, and a tendency to suicide and homicide, but especially towards death for the purpose of procuring the desired drug. Grimbale. Maradondi Montagiel reports the case of an advocate who, being refused morphine on board ship, broke into the ship's stores to procure it. A woman suffered so from being deprived of morphine that she ended by prostituting herself in order to obtain it. Another addicted to the use of morphine murdered her granddaughter and maintained that the drug drove her to acts of violence. An hysterical woman, 28 years old, had it afford by getting goods to the value of 120 francs under a false name, but with a strange improvidence. He returned to the store a few days after and returned part of the goods, saying that she was not satisfied with them. She had sold the rest to buy morphine for she owed the druggist 1,600 francs, and when he refused her further credit, she committed her offence. Subchapter 48. Spoiled Maze Indian corn that has become spoiled must be regarded as a cause of crime. Experimental observations have shown that hens of good-natured dogs fed upon spoiled maize become fierce after a time. I have already in my Etudes Cliniques sur la Pelague, 1872, and in my Trait sur la Pelagre, Turin, 1890, told stories of criminals where the original factor was Pelagria, that is to say, the use of spoiled Indian corn. Thus a man afflicted with Pelagria out of avarice starved his children and killed one of them for having stolen a few potatoes out of his field to appease his hunger. A woman threw her newborn child into a well, almost publicly. Another stole to satisfy her insatiable appetite and said, I should be capable of eating a man. All three had acquired moral insanity to an advanced age through being poisoned by maize. End of section 7